Right. Um, so that's the then the next topic, which is um, block namespaces, which is pretty similar to what Chris already said, and that is that whenever you create a device, a block device, in whichever shape or form, that device will be globally visible to each and everything running on that system. Um, visible on several areas. One is, as I said, the um, the major minor numbers thing, so you can always create uh, create a device node and access the device via the device node. It will show up in dev tempfs if enabled, and um, and it will also show up in sysfs under various things, lists, whatever. Um, so why it's possible to restrict the visibility somewhat via the device C group? It doesn't really resolve the underlying issue, that is that the device itself is globally ac accessible to each and everything. And so that is why, why, why we came up with the idea of block namespaces, whether it wouldn't be possible, similar to the network namespaces, to just essentially have a mapping table internally for the um, major minor numbers visible to the process to the global major minor numbers, roughly. Uh, so those are really the semantics you want because the network namespace is exclusive. It's a label namespace, which means that if you create a network namespace in a network namespace, it sort of you lose the interface. In his use case, it sounds like you want the block device to propagate through children. It sort of it wants to be slightly more a parent-child-based namespace than a label namespace. Yeah, well, this is not. I, I Block namespaces would actually be coming from the other side. What I want is to precisely restrict it. So if you have a container mm -hmm. which opens an iSCSI device, that iSCSI device really should only be visible to within that container to no one else. Because really, I mean, it's, um, it's that. Pr right, so now you need an admin because uh, devices are only, certain operations on devices are only liable to the admin. So you've got to have a user namespace to get this to work as well. Yeah, I mean, Yes, probably the uh, there was a patch that uh, is taking one step back from the really hard problem of namespacing the actual device numbers. There was a patch that a while back a, a colleague of mine did at a previous company that I worked uh, who namespaced devtempfs. Mm -hmm. So made it possible that first of all you could mount devtempfs into a uh, container, or meaning uh, sorry, in an unprivileged container. Um, so uh, namespacing of devtempfs was done based on uh, the user namespace, essentially. And uh, then you could mount devtempfs in a container and then you c could create, he only did it for loop devices. This is where, where we did the original loop device work. Um, and when you created a new uh, loop device uh, via the dev loop control interface from within that container, then the loop device would only show up in the devtempfs mount of the container, not on the host. Nice story that it was, seems all the, it seems in general pretty clean. Uh, the problem really is Sisyphus. Sisyphus is a, a worse you know. Sisyphus is problematic more than proc in a sense because all devices will always show up in all namespaces and all of the information attached to it. This is a problem that uh, we've been briefly exchanging mails on for uh, the LoopFS. It's essentially a hack, to be honest. Mm. The LoopFS hack that I've worked on to provide namespaced loop devices to container because currently this is not uh, this this is still not possible, um, and that's really difficult. The reason why we don't have a block device namespace is not because people thought this is a bad idea. People thought this is a good idea. The reason we don't have it is because Greg was vehemently opposed to it and namespacing Sisyphus. Okay. Um, I mean. I always thought if we, this is just my, mm. if we were to do this properly, then we at least need a new mount option probably for SysFS. Yeah, arguably, yes. Yeah. So that SysFS, so that we retain the old behavior in case uh, uh, mm. someone doesn't want to regress how SysFS yeah. works. Um, yeah, and then g give it a new, uh, give it a new mount option on the host probably, where you say give me the SysFS mount, uh, but only show me the devices that actually belong to my mm -hmm. namespace. You mean sort of like is being done for security FS now? Yes, that's what I uh, did for, that's what I suggested for security FS, yeah. It's a massive amount of work. Sure it is, yeah. It's, um, 
I mean, clear. Th eventually, this is something where we want to head for, but we, um, I mean, what I would like to head for, um, but is that we indeed Paul this Sisyphus filter out the view that it's that we only yeah. um, present devices which are there, which I guess we need to do anyway if we were to go about um, virtualizing, uh, virtualizing the major minor numbers. Yeah. Because the major minor numbers also show up in Sisyphus. So if we have virtualized them, each process will have a different view, view what will show up in yes. sys block or sys character. Yeah, exactly. So we will have to have that anyway. Well, part of the other problem is this is a block device that you actually want to mount that has a file system on it. So then we have the problem of there are only a certain number of file systems that are allowed to be mounted. Within yeah, but that's not that, that's uh, that's what I consider uh, a, that's a container manager problem. You can solve this, w which is not pretty, but you know it's at least possible. Like you can set up images in the container, and then we did it via something quick excursion, and then back to the original yeah. topic, and then we use syscall interception to actually mount it. So that that really works. Um, block device number, yeah, block device namespaces. Okay, so the. Um, I forgot what I wanted to say. I'm sorry. I'm pretty jet lagged. So no, but the the key thing is, well, um, shall we actually let me challenge what pr you were probably about to say, which is we don't. F we, if we did this and it was actually effectively namespacing SysFS, it would be for all devices. It would work for block character yeah. everything, isn't it? It, it would, would be for all devices. Yeah, oh clearly. yeah, I wanted yes. to say yes. one one thing we have in common for actually giving this a shot uh, uh, again, even though Greg is vehemently opposed to it, we would need to talk to him probably about it before. But one of the reasons is. The, s the original story always was why this is an unacceptable. Devices belong to the initial namespace and uh, nowhere else. Was why? Do yeah, exactly. It not just the why, but the story is no longer true for a couple yeah. of years now. Think about it. If you if you think about just network devices and you argue network devices don't have re uh, representations, uh, don't ca have character device de representations. So we don't uh, character de uh, uh, network devices are actually special. That that is why they are namespaced because network devices are n uh, properly namespaced even in uh, in Sisyphus. But uh, nowadays, think about InfiniBand devices, so RDMA-capable devices that you slice into SR, take an uh, InfiniBand device that you slice into mm -hmm. various SRIOV virtual functions, mm -hmm. so that you have 20 or whatever uh, IB devices. These IB devices are all associated with a separate set of character devices in slash staff UB verbs or whatever it is. And uh, people delegate InfiniBand devices to containers. Uh, what they what you need to do right now is you need to move that InfiniBand device, the actual uh, virtual function, into the container, and then you also need to make sure to pick out all of the character devices that belong uh, to the IB device by parsing through SysFS, and then putting all of those character devices manually, meaning the container manager needs to do it into the container. The correct model for this is obviously you create, you slice it up into different. Uh, uh, into different uh, net virtual functions. You move that virtual function into the container and all of the devices associated with this virtual function show up in DevTempFS. That would be the model that we want because that's how device delegation in this case uh, should work. Yep, and this is, uh, we have the same, uh, the same problem on, uh, on the SCSI side um, with NPIV where we can create virtual SCSI hosts which really, really, really at the end of the day will be Will do belong to a container or a virtual machine, but they will all show up in the host, and um, we actually have to explicitly disable UDEV to keep on running on these devices which are exported over to the uh, to the virtual machine. We th there is massive problems associated with this. I have a long list of this because yeah. I've been uh, struggling with this for such a long time. Um, System D's uh, UDEV uh, manager. Uh, can currently, well, Leonard always argues it shouldn't run in a container because SysFS isn't namespaced and then UDEV gets confused because UDEV uh, enumerates devices inside of the container and has a, has a, a, a database yeah. and then UDEV on the host has a, a database list and so on. Then they might start renaming things or so on. So there is a lot of confusion because, you know, all of the devices show up inside and, uh, and yeah. uh, outside of the container. And that is a massive problem because we have users that want to run systemd UDFD in their containers. You know, you know why? Because you need it for network devices. And network devices are properly namespaced. They're also namespaced in SysFS. If you move a network device from, uh, from the initial network namespace into a container network namespace, then uh, the device gets yanked from SysFS on the host 
and into the container sysfs instance, if it mounted in the sysfs instance. Yes. And sysfs is tagged by uh, the network namespace of the container. Yep, so, and that's what I mean. So it's not unheard of. It's not that sysfs can't, is in principle not capable of filtering out devices. It already does for, for network namespaces. It's just that, well, it doesn't do it for block, uh, for block devices or character devices, can be speaking. Wait, wait a minute, it's still not actually properly namespace. You, if you want to go down the PCI bus, you can still find the network card. If you, assuming you put a physical network card into the namespace, you can still find it from the root doing that. So it has fixed that. It has, you have? I think so. Uh, so one of there was a, a more annoying issue when you created a, a network, when you created a new network device inside uh, of a container's network namespace and user namespace, then uh, you had all of the Sisyphus entries uh, show up correctly inside, uh, only inside of the container Sisyphus instance, uh, and uh, the ownership was correct, and it didn't show up on the host. When you created a VET device on the host and moved it into the container, the ownership wasn't changed. So you had the wrong ownership on the host and inside of the container as well. And uh, some paths weren't currently ch uh, correctly changed as well. And I think I've, I, I've sent a patch series for this to, to the networking tree in tw 2019 or, or something like this. Uh, you, can, you can double check, but I'm pretty sure uh, th th there were a bunch of issues. It's not properly namespaced because this is not something that um, the namespacing knowledge hasn't propagated to all of the subsystem, which is totally understandable. It's not that we, that so far, they haven't been done a great job at explaining how namespaces work. Yeah, there is not a lot we were of looking at the SROV use case for network devices, just pushing yeah. them into individual containers. Um, and so there are still a lot of holes, even in the mm. relatively uh, well namespaced uh, networking uh, networking uh, file system. Um, yeah, but in general, I agree. We need we, we should at least try so to get something like uh, block device uh, namespaces. So, and hence, I do wonder whether it would be possible to have it in a well staged approach that we first initially leave Sisyphus well as it is, yeah. if we can, just ensure that we properly blank out the access to the devices via uh, via the uh, device nodes, i.e., having a virtualized um, a major minor tom a table. And um, use that as, as an initial step to separate out things. And once that's in, then we can look at how we could properly filter out entries in SysFS or whatever, make SysFS entry namespace aware. I yeah. think those two things should be we should be able to separate them. I, hope. I think it's crucial even for the for the general uh, upstreaming story because if you come with a patch set that uh, completely reworks SysFS and yeah, everything sure. in it's one not thing, making then, any then friends. Yeah, sure. you can kiss that whole thing goodbye. Yeah. Um, but the general question is, do we want to go that direction? Or do, or do we want to state, well, actually, it's a device which is a general thing and really should, only, should, be only, um, should belong to the initial namespace and not to any container namespace? That's actually a more underlying question. Well, this is your admin problem. So the device requires an administrator to actually plug it in correctly. So if you take the view that the container orchestration system just does all of this for you, it's the one that has to do the mount, and then it can pass the mounted file system down into a container. And if that's your only use case, you're, you're not quite containerized, but effectively the orchestration system is coping for you. But you're, you're, I'm not talking about passing it off. I'm talking about the use case that you have a container which creates an iSCSI device and deletes it on when the container is shut down. Should this iSCSI device be visible in the host or not? No. That's what I think too. But well, another approach would be we well. We can do it either yeah. way. The question is, what do you want to do with, or who controls what you do with the iSCSI device? The control is completely within the container. No one else. Yeah, does. I think that's how I understood it. Is it it's essentially yeah. works like the network, the network device. Like l most uh, operations can be done from inside of the containers. Yeah. Uh, Username. But then you need to mount it inside the container, and we have yeah. all the trouble with the file systems and everything else. It, it, so, so what I'm fishing for is how much interaction of the orchestration system we presume exists. Do you need to do this? For, for organizing the Linux SRV, you have for storage devices, we don't Do -do. Oh, it works. For the storage devices, we don't usually have SRIOV, and there are some basically custom builds. So we don't have the luxury of, of the network cards uh, with virtual and physical functions. I know it exists. Don't look at me that way. But we are interested as I mean this is something we, we don't store it. Um, 
we would like to have it on the host, but also within the namespace. But uh, you have this device, you manage it, it's there, but inside of the container, I mean, you might wanna give it, like, uh, we have these limited resources for zone drives, and you might wanna have that in a namespace, so maybe the zone drive supports 100 open zones, and you might wanna have that container be able to do 20. Um, and this, so we are looking into this, and I'm happy that you're kind of also kind of, we, we think it's a good idea to have this block device. We know that it is out of how you do containers or facilities, but, but we do see for the high performance database use cases, uh, they usually work with raw storage, and yeah. Oh. We'll chip in as we, as, as this kind of material comes available, we can help. We need at least one more beer before I can even contemplate this. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> I haven't Watch even that. adapted to the time zone yet. Right. Oh, <laughs> blimey. Uh, possibly. Yes, of course, we could l can look into it, but it really is more a QoS issue which you raise and not really a because I wouldn't know how to map it at all at this time. This would be because you, you would have to have concurrent access to that device and you would actually need to do some sort of QoS on the concurrent access which really this is about. It's not so much whether it's uh, not, uh, not so much about visibility, it's more about QoS on existing devices, which is, you possibly can do a serial for that. I mean, <laughs> it, it kind of works, but it, it, it's, this is the best thing that drives everything, so. Not if you, you should be able to do some sort of you, serial it, you can, Yes, it's, it can work, but if you want to do it in the containerized way and how everything sets up and. and I thought C group were containerized. That was the point of C group, didn't it? No, it works, yeah. but containers and block storage isn't there yet. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So anyway, um, so the question is, uh, shall, we, shall we try or shall I try or we try to um, see to have the blocks um, yeah. na names make the main namespace available or is I it a lost cause? It, it can't hurt. The situation is yeah. also vastly different. The number of arguments for it is have increased with uh, over time quite significantly. Yeah. Originally when, when that was proposed, containers weren't as widely used mm. and uh, de delegating devices to containers was just a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of people were interested in this in the right. first place so it wasn't really a, a big use case. So it was easy to just say, eh, yeah. don't delegate devices to containers. Do you, do you really need a, a new block namespace? Can you say that block devices created by networks um, and network namespaces only show up in the network namespace? Yeah, that is in principle possible, but um, you end up with a, you might end up with the same amount of, uh, the same amount of work. Because the device creation logic is uh, different for network devices and for, um, for character and block device. What I mean by this, what I mean by this is, the uh, character and block devices are based on the K object framework, and uh, the network devices. If I remember this correctly, I haven't uh, looked at this in, a, in about a year. They are not based on K objects, uh, K objects at all. So it's a totally different namespacing story. So stories, uh, story. So uh, networking is namespace completely independent of character devices and block devices. Um, and so you need to hook into the uh, the character, and you ca and you can take, as far as I can tell, you can take the character and block device creation out of the out of the block path. You need to create a, a, a set of function out of the K object path. You need to create a set of primitives and functions that allow you to create namespaced character and block devices. Anyway, you need to do this in a generic way. The loopfs patch loopfs patch set that I wrote yeah. has these functions added. Yeah. So, and um, also the other thing is that we, if we were doing this, we would be completely l losing out on InfiniBand because that's not really network as such. So, or, uh, hang on, I'm not sure. Right. Is, it also is it also running via the network namespace, the InfiniBand stuff? Yeah. If you're not using IP over V? Yes, but uh, also the underlying, uh, also the underlying infiniband objects. So infiniband can have two appearances. One is as an IP thing, in which yeah. it's basically just an IP transport yeah. protocol. The other is technically as a bus protocol, where it appears a bit yeah. like a PCI yeah. bus. That second one wouldn't be namespaced. 
Exactly, the second one wouldn't be, which means that for NVMe over RDMA, we would be losing out because it's just using IP over B for the initial discovery and everything else it goes via real InfiniBand. I know. I remember correctly, a few years ago, a new container was introduced specifically for RDMA interfaces. Really? Okay, might be. I'm not really that into it, so yeah, you might be right. Anyway, no, but I still prefer to have a different namespace for um, for block devices. So if you so definitely so tagging into the network namespace doesn't really feel that right. And again, for loop devices, it wouldn't work because loop devices have no in the, uh, no uh, clue with networking at all. Why should they be ta uh, tagged to a network namespace? And Sisyphus in principle, the K-object logic in principle, this is one of the advantages, uh, has the ability to create uh, objects, uh, create Sisyphus entries uh, based on namespace tags. And uh, the, the, uh, the KernFS infrastructure, which is the underlying infrastructure that makes SysFS possible, has namespace tag as well. So it means when you mount SysFS inside, for example, a new network namespace, then uh, SysFS will, will take a reference on the network namespace tag and attach it to the superblock information structure. This is file system specific nonsense, but essentially it just means that SysFS now is aware I'm in a new network namespace, therefore, I should only show the network devices, uh, network namespace devices that belong to my network namespaces and exclude all of yeah. the others. And I did similar logic I for block and character devices based on the user namespace mm -hmm. in this case. Okay. All right. I think. Okay. 